Have you ever wondered what precision recall and F1 score actually mean? In data science, we usually deal with three types of problems. The first one is regression, where we are trying to predict a numerical value. The second one is classification, where we are trying to predict classes. And the third one is reinforcement learning, when an agent is trying to learn from penalties and rewards. In this video, we will focus on classification problem and I will show you why accuracy can be misleading and why we use F1 score precision and recall. In this video, we will use MNIST dataset, which is basically a hello world of data science. MNIST datasets contains 70,000 handwritten images and each image is 28 by 28 pixels. And each digit is from zero to nine. We can use a fetch option from scikit-learn to fetch our dataset and store it as a dictionary. As you can see, this dictionary has many keys, but we need only two data and a target. Data are our images while the target are real numbers of that images something that we are also trying to predict this is a supervised learning task you can see from our training data set x that it has a shape of 70,000 which are rows that means that we have 70,000 images and we have 784 columns that every column represents a pixel which can be from 0 to 255 which represents a grayscale image let's take a random image for example let it be 8 index and let's see what that actually contains so what we get is an array which is one dimensional and it has 784 values and each represents a pixel in order to plot that image we need to reshape it into 28 rows and 28 columns and as we can see we get a, we got a handwritten digit which says three let's check if our y target column it is actually stored at three but here we need to be careful because this is actually it is stored as a string and machine learning models like to work with a numerical value so it is much better to convert it for example to an unsigned integer with eight bits but let's simplify our problem and instead of predicting all 10 values which is a multi-class classification problem let's create a binary classificator which will tell us is the image a tree or not a tree we can start by converting our target into an array which will contain values of true if the number is a tree and false if it is any other number so what we will do we will train two models the first model is a multi-layer perception MLP which is a feed-forward neural network and the second model we will train is a stochastic gradient descent which is a much simpler model but it is much faster and it works really well with big data sets and then we we will use cross validation to evaluate them and as you can see for the stochastic gradient descent we got almost a 90 percent accuracy rate which looks extremely amazing but let's see is it really but let's create our own binary classificator which for every image when we ask the classificator is this a tree it will always say no it's false and what can we see here with our always false classificator we also get a 90 percent accuracy rate why because our data set is unbalanced if you look at these graphs we can see that we have 60,000 images and almost 6,000 images are the number three, 10 percent. So if we guess that on our entire data set that the image is never a tree, we will be correct 90 percent of the time. So to get a clearer picture and real understanding how our model performs, we should plot a confusion matrix. And to plot a confusion matrix, we need a real predicted values, not only a trained model. And we can get predicted values also from a training set by using a cross-validation predict function, which will get predicted values from a clean training set. So we can save our test data set for the end of our project. And as you can see, we have two 
two confusion matrix for our both models. It's obvious that, that multi-layer perception neural network is a lot better. What does confusion matrix actually mean? On the y-axis as rows, we have an actual values. Is it a tree or is it not a tree? While on the x-axis as columns, we have our model predicted values. Is it a tree or is it not a tree? So in the bottom right corner, we have a value which says that our model predicted that it is a tree and it is a tree. So those are true positives. On the bottom left, our model predicted that it's not a tree, but it is actually a tree. So those are false negatives. On the bottom right corner, our model predicted that it is a tree, but it's not a tree. So those are false positives. And on the upper left, we have true negatives, which means that our model predicted that it's not a tree and it, the image is not a tree. Okay, so now we are ready to define some key metrics. Precision actually means how many times did our model actually correctly guess that our picture is actually a tree. And we can define precision by true dividing true positives by true positives plus false positives. The problem with precision is that like we created our own classifier that always says that image is false, it's not a tree. We can also create a classifier that says one image is a tree and all other are not, which basically mean we have one guess that is correct and it has 100% precision. And that's why we add another matrix which is, a which is called a recall. Of all the images that are three in our data set, how many times was our model correct? And we get recall by dividing true positives by true positives plus false negatives. And since we can have both ways most of the time to have high precision and high recall, and that's why we are add a matrix called F1, which takes both precision and recall into one matrix, and it is really sensitive to small values. So in order to have a high F1 score we need to have both values high. So a high F1 score means that both precision and recall are actually really high strong and that means that our model is actually extremely good. So to sum it up accuracy can be really misleading so that's why we add new matrix F1 precision and recall. I really hope that you learn something and see you in the future.